Welcome to another installment of Fighting for the Faith. My name is Chris Roseborough. I am your servant in Jesus Christ. This is the channel that compares what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. Now, I've been a little bit busy. You'll note that I've been singularly focused for the past few months now. I have been spending most of my time, if not all of it, uh, either researching or debating white... Christian nationalist. This is not Christian nationalism like Stephen Wolf is promoting. This is a different brand altogether. It's more in line with the national socialism of of the <clears throat> German historical Nazi type past. And all, all of that being said, you'll note that we have a couple of videos missing here on YouTube because I can't cover this topic without risking losing the channel altogether because the YouTube algorithm doesn't recognize uh, criticism of such ideology as opposed to promotion of such ideology. Therefore, <clears throat> we're not going to take that risk. And if you've missed the last two episodes of Fighting for the Faith, just you know, head on over to that other channel, that other uh, platform that allows for free speech, and, uh, <clears throat> and you'll, <clears throat> you'll see what we're talking about. And those of you watching us on that platform... We're glad to be here as well. But all that being said, it's been a while since we've uh, done anything other than that type of topic. And so I thought I would ease into things by doing a little shorter uh, dumpster fire today. And man, have I got a doozer for you. And uh, and we're, we'll, <laughs> we're going to start with Bethel. Uh, well, actually, Bill Johnson speaking at a church. Uh, he had a conference that he was invited to, and oh man, it, the the things that he says. That, well, the, there's so many things we could cover, but we're going to zero in on one particular thing. Did you know that it's a requirement over at Hogwarts, uh, the so-called Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry? It's a requirement for graduation that you must give three false prophecies. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about that, and <laughs> and then. <laughs> Uh, we're going to, we're going to change gears altogether. We're going to be listening to Chuck Pierce, um, not at Glory of Zion, but talking with some people doing ministry in Alaska. And, uh, <laughs> huh. we'll call this how not to do spiritual warfare. And we'll, we'll check out the biblical text along the way. So trying to ease back into uh, the normal fare that we have here at Fighting for the Faith. Clear my mind of all of that white Christian nationalism stuff, because it, it's, it's just it's deplorable, uh, to say the least. But uh, let's, let's do this. Let's whirl up the desktop. And, uh, and you'll note that this particular photograph took this one just a few weeks ago. In fact, um, so we, if you remember back in April, there was a huge geomagnetic storm that uh, hit planet Earth. There was a big uh, coronal discharge from the sun. And when it got to uh, Minnesota and North Dakota, wow. <laughs> that's the only words I have. Are, the, the, that's, that's the word. Wow. It was amazing. In fact, l let me show you some of these things. Hang on a second here. Uh, uh, these were some of the photographs I took that evening, uh, and uh, and it was just yeah, it was amazing. It was legitimately amazing. So, uh, by the way, that's a, that's the building for Kongs of Inger Lutheran Church in Oslo, Minnesota, where I happen to serve as pastor. And so that that was uh, just a spectacular thing. And then you know, at that time we had some of the fields that were flooded because the snow was melting, and so that created an opportunity for a little bit of a reflection. Kind of shot and thought I'd throw that in there but uh, let's let's uh, let's get another one of uh, this is the one I'm currently using on my desktop and then this is one more I mean that kind of looks almost looks like you know something kind of scary or nefarious but uh, and then this one of some trees and the aurora that was just a spectacular night by the way just absolutely fantastic I'm glad I could share that with you but uh, let me let me put that away and let's whirl this up so Bill Johnson is going to explain while he's speaking at a conference at James River Church. This is, I want to say this is in early April or maybe late March of this year. And he is going to explain how they, that at Bethel, they require their, in order for a student to graduate, they must give at least three false prophecies. 
I, you, you just can't make this stuff up. And uh, and by the way, if you would like a long form uh, look at what how to test. Uh, the Biblical Test of Prophets and Prophecy. This was a video that we did um, four or five months ago, and uh, you know, it's called The Biblical Test of Prophets and Prophecy. We'll put a uh, link down below and, you know, maybe up, no, at this corner over, you know, the, the corner over there, we'll probably put a, you know, a little call out so that you can uh, go and watch that afterwards if you haven't already seen it. But uh, let's listen in to uh, Bill Johnson explaining to us this rule that they have at the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry and see if we can make any biblical sense of this. I should probably add this. When you get it wrong, don't quit. Clean up your mess and try again. This may sound strange to you, but in our school of ministry, our students are actually required to get it wrong. Required to get it wrong. If they don't fail at least three times in the first year, we won't let them in the third, second year. Why? If you're not willing to take risk to the point where you get it wrong, you probably won't get it right in the way you need to. But secondly, we want you to get it wrong in a loving environment so you know how to clean up your mess. This makes no sense. I, I, I mean, just like biblically, no sense at all. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to head over to the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. This is where the Ten Commandments are found. And uh, let me get my Hebrew just a little larger in case I need it. Uh, and uh, Ten Commandments, if you're not familiar with them, you really should be familiar with the Ten Commandments. And you'll note that we have a commandment about taking God's name in vain. Uh, have you ever heard of the sin of blasphemy? Right. So you shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in in vain. And here the uh, the Hebrew word for vain is shah. And let's uh let's kind of pull that up and see if we can I got to make that bigger cuz <laughs> my eyes are not that great anymore. But uh, shah means uh, emptiness, nothingness, vanity, and you'll note of ineffective offering to, to take up God's name in vain, uh, emptiness of speech of false prophecy, emptiness of speech. So, so the idea here is, is that everybody who prophesies in God's name, you know, I'm, thus saith the Lord kind of stuff. I feel the Lord is telling me, I, I, the Lord has laid it on my heart, uh, you know, things like this. Uh, they're speaking for God. That's what prophecy is, somebody delivering a message from God. Uh, that being the case, though, you'll note that this commandment from Exodus 20, verse 7 says, you shall not take the name of Yahweh your God in vain, for Yahweh will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. That, to take his name to emptiness, to false prophecy, the, you get the idea. You, you cannot, you cannot give a false prophecy without breaking this commandment from the Ten Commandments. And that is a big problem for Bill Johnson and people who buy in today's modern charismatic movement and all the, the things that pr try to pass themselves off as prophecy. But you legitimately heard him say that they are required to get it wrong three times, which means they're not hearing from God. And then three times they say, I, I feel the Lord is saying something. Wow, is that, that, that's also blasphemous on another level. Let me give you a, a follow-up text for this. And uh, if we go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 13, consider what this says. Uh, the word of Yahweh came to me, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are prophesying and say to those who prophesy from their own hearts. You'll note that one of the things you can absolutely know for certain is when somebody gives a false prophecy, God is not the source which means there's a different source altogether, and that source is going to be the person's own sinful heart, potentially the demonic, things like this. So to prophesy to those who prophesy from their own hearts, saying, hear the word of Yahweh. Thus says the Adonai Elohim, the Lord God, woe, woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen 
nothing. Your prophets have been like jackals among ruins, O Israel. You have not gone up in the breaches or built up a wall for the house of Israel that it might stand in battle in the day of Yahweh. They have seen false visions and lying divinations. They say, declares the Lord when the Lord has not sent them, and yet they expect him to fulfill their word. Have you not seen a false vision and uttered a lying divination whenever you have said, declares the Lord, although I have not spoken? Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, because you have uttered falsehood and have seen lying visions, therefore, behold, I am against you, declares the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and who give lying divinations. They shall not be in the council of my people, nor be enrolled in the register of the house of Israel. Nor shall they enter the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am Adonai Elohim, the Lord God, precisely because they have misled my people saying, peace when there is no peace, and because when the people build a wall, these prophets smear it with whitewash. Does this sound like God is like w- just completely hunky-dunky okay? With, with we, we need to teach people how to prophesy, and so that means we need to give them a safe, loving, uh, uh, a safe space, if you would, where they can, we're going to require them to give three false prophecies so that they can, they can learn how to fail correctly and and clean up their mess and, and fix their mistakes why on earth do you think that if god's talking to you that you're going to get it wrong if god's legitimately talking to you you'll hear him and what he says will come true but this practice in and of itself completely blasphemous i mean listen again to what he says when you get it wrong don't quit clean up your mess and try again. This may sound strange to you, but in our school of ministry, our students are actually required to get it wrong. Required. Required to get it wrong. This goes against everything in scripture. You're requiring them to sin. I mean, let me give you an analogy here, okay? The scripture says, thou shalt not commit adultery. This is the commandment. So basically what he is saying using this logic is that in order to teach couples how to be faithful to each other prior to them getting married, we're going to require them to commit adultery three times so that they can learn how to clean up their mess and to do this in a safe environment. It makes no sense, does it? Now, when you put it like that, no, it makes no sense at all. If they don't fail at least three times in the first year, we won't let them in the third, second year. Why? If you're not willing to take risk to the point where you get it wrong, you probably won't get it right in the way you need to. But secondly, we want you to get it wrong in a loving environment so you know how to clean up your mess. This runs against every biblical text regarding how you test prophecy. Uh, you, you'll note the, the governing text I always like to go back to is found. In fact, let me do this. I, uh, I, I'm going to need there. There we go. I'm going to go right here. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. And 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. And you'll note that do not believe every spirit, the do not believe bit, the pistuita from the Greek, that's an imperative. Do not believe every spirit. You're required to not believe every spirit, but you're supposed to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. What the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry is creating All of their graduates being required to fail three times when it comes to this kind of stuff, they are producing false prophets. It's the school of false prophets. That's what they're producing. Everybody who has a credential from the Bethel School of Supernatural Ministry, a graduate there, you can say without any blushing whatsoever, every single one of them, since that's a requirement, they're all false prophets because that's what they're required to be. 
Yeah, I get dumpster fire indeed. Yeah. All right. Now, this next one. I, there are no ways in which I can prepare you adequately for what it is that you're about to hear. So this is called Kingdom Alliance, the Alpha and Omega State Watchmen at the Gates. And note they spelled that wrong. And these are folks that run a, a ministry channel from Alaska. And they have they've invited on special guest Chuck Pierce. <laughs> and, and I don't even I, I'm just gonna hit play. And we'll, 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 we'll work with it together. Please make sure that if you are watching this segment of Fighting for the Faith, number one, you're not driving. Number two, you're not lifting heavy equipment. So if you're at the gym and you're getting ready to do a bench press, turn this off. Because <laughs> we don't want to have anybody injured because this is Looney Tunes like of an extraordinary kind. But here we go. And, and you know that Alaska is the only place on earth that has land on both sides of the international date line where daily we have yesterday today and tomorrow happening at the same time and so i just uh, believe that you know we we have really been warring over the uh over the borders of alaska and i want to give mary an opportunity to share as well okay they've been warring over the borders of alaska this is about spiritual warfare apparently um, Chuck, I'm really glad you mentioned that about the significance of Alaska along with Arizona and uh, Alabama, because just recently when we were on our prophetic war council uh, last <laughs> They've been convening prophetic war councils? Who knew? I mean, don't you think that something like that should make the news? Month, um, February 16th, I heard two squadrons of warplanes flying overhead, hundreds, hundreds of them. And I went and looked out my window thinking that uh, we had launched some warplanes, but it, they were angels that God had loosed to wage war over Alaska. And uh, four days later, they, while I was in prayer and looking out my window with my feet up, I saw the angels returning, these squadrons returning and coming into the Anchorage Bowl landing, oh, angel after angel after angel coming in. I believe that God has loosed his war squadron over... <laughs> this isn't even the craziest bit just hang on to yourself this is gonna get weirder god has released his war squadron wow that this is this is some very important prophetic news that we're breaking here at fighting for the faith for the atmosphere to even as in the book of daniel there was a war in the heavenlies uh where daniel or michael was waging war with the prince of persia our prayer teams have been waging war faithfully for some time and now there has been an engagement in the heavenly realms over alaska and we have had an amazing amazing breakthrough and then in i, I feel like i could have just gotten bingo if i just pulled a card out wow march when I was at one of our uh, KN meetings, I had the scent of myrrh. I, I'd never smelled myrrh before, but it was an earthy <laughs> scent. And uh, one of the ladies there brought me a little vial of myrrh, and that's what it was. Well, myrrh was there at the life and the death of Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end. And of course, Alaska being the Alpha and Omega state. It's <laughs> uh, Alaska's the Alpha and Omega state. Who knew? Just, just hang in there. Chuck Pierce is about to chime in. And um, mm -hmm. it's a state where things begin. It's a state where things end. And, uh, and Mary, I think Alaska has a supernatural fragrance about it. Also, I <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have a hard time holding it together here. Alaska has a supernatural fragrance. Really? It does? Uh-huh. Sure. I think that's something that we're going to have to enter into in Holy Spirit in days ahead to know the smell of our territory. And so we'll just say right now, Alaska will be our MERS state. Amen. <laughs> Alpha, uh, Alaska has been promoted to the Alpha and Omega state as well as the MERS state. That change in, change in interesting you know, details. I don't know what the state bird of Alaska is or you know, what their flower is, but now they're the MERS state and the Alpha and Omega state. Somebody should make you know, you know, some stickers or something like that that they can hand out to tourists. I believe that what's happening is the eyes have been opening. God has shown me the eyes being open. The he 
has blinded my eyes to a certain very valuable thing that I was looking for. And after several months of prayer, he suddenly opened my eyes and that uh, valuable thing I was looking for was right where it should have been, but I couldn't see it until God opened my eyes. That means he's opening the eyes, he's opening the ears, and he's opening the sense of smell in a brand new way. So Let me ask you this question. What religion is this? This isn't Christianity. I don't know what this is, but this is not biblical Christianity. I'll explain more from the Bible in a minute, but let's let this spin out a little more. All of our senses now are coming up higher into something new. And I believe as it has begun in Alaska, things that have begun in Alaska is also taking place in the lower 48. So these warplanes that have been launched, uh, more and more of our people, the kingdom, Ecclesia, they're going to start hearing things in the spirit. They're going to start hearing um, not only angelic activity, but demonic activity. They're going to know when there's a sound in the atmosphere that they take action right then. So I feel like what God is demonstrating here in Alaska is significant for the entire United States. Well, remember with Windwalkers, we've all always seen that what happens there in Alaska, the wind blows it down into the uh, uh, mainland here. And that becomes so important for us to understand that because the Spirit of God there, when the Spirit of God is moving in a... Why would it be important for anybody to believe that spiritual things that start in Alaska are blown into the lower 48? This doesn't even make any lucid sense. Alaska, I believe the wind of the Spirit will be blown. Let me show you all... I don't think I've done this with uh, Alaska, but let me show you what the Lord showed me when Dutch and I were in South Carolina this year. <laughs> oh, no. He has a graphic. <laughs> Brace yourself. I, I, don't, I don't know what to label this. I don't know if this is a prophetic weather forecast. I, I don't know what it is that we're looking at here. I just know it has nothing to do with Christianity. In, uh, I think it was July, uh, the Lord caught me up and I know I've shared it publicly, but it's very important to Alaska because I saw, first of all, four ruling angels surrounding America. And that angel at the top was aligned where Alaska and Maine meet in the atmosphere. And so I believe... Wait, what? <laughs> I'm backing this up for just a minute because I, I, I was never that great at geography, but I'm pretty sure that Alaska and Maine don't touch each other. I, just hang on. Four ruling angels yeah. surrounding yeah. America. Yeah. And that angel at the top that was one. aligned where Alaska and Maine meet. I, I, I promise we'll get into the Bible here in a minute. In the atmosphere. And yeah. so I believe that's very important also that we understand that the ruling angel from the north is uh, a, a some way aligned with what is happening there in Alaska. Then all of a sudden, 51 angels entered in and surrounded uh uh, America. And for the first time I knew as we were headed into this year that we're in, America was surrounded by angelic activity. And Mary, I really think what you're describing is uh, the portion of that activity that is dwelling over that northern part ruled by that ruling angel that God has sent. These are governmental angels. They're uh, more like seraphim that have commanding glory to them. And and I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt there were 51 angels. I, I have no idea. I didn't have to count them. I just knew. And what the Lord said beginning at Passover, these angels would start being assigned to each state. And then I saw uh, these ruling forces were assigned geographically to command this angelic activity in America, beginning after Passover. So I really believe what you're sensing is where we're headed as a nation. Now, the <laughs> what you're sensing is where we're heading as a nation. All right. So I asked the question, what religion is this? 
This isn't biblical Christianity. This is fantasy land. I mean, th- I mean, wow, is this like way out there. So no, we are instructed by God to test the spirits to see whether they are from God for many false prophets have gone out into the world. Chuck Pierce has never given a lucid prophecy, let alone a true one. He has shown over and over again he's a false prophet, and I have no idea what he's blathering about here, but it has nothing to do with Christianity at all. And that's kind of the big problem. And that is that so many people today who call themselves Christians are effectively and completely biblically illiterate. They have put themselves under the teaching of men like Chuck Pierce and others who couldn't rightly handle a biblical text to save their lives. They do not meaningfully understand what the scripture says, and they know a bunch of out of context biblical buzzwords, you know, uh, and, and even like not even biblical buzzwords, just buzzwords that kind of float around and in particular charismatic NAR prophecy type centers. And uh, as a result of it, they are completely oblivious to what the Bible actually teaches, and they're chasing their spiritual tales, spinning around and thinking that they've really got, they've really dug into something substantive and deep, when in fact, they're just following man-made myths in complete deception. Uh, One of the things that I think is important for Christians to recognize, that there are 27 books in the New Testament, 26 of them, all but one warn us against false teachers. And so let's take a look at some of the warnings we have. Second Peter chapter 1 says this, We did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For when he received honor and glory from God the Father, and the voice was borne to him by the majestic glory. By the way, that's a reference to uh, the Mount of Transfiguration. This is saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this very voice born from heaven, and we were with him on the holy mountain. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed. The Bible, by the way. We have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a land shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing knowing this first of all, no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And you'll note that a lot of people today, they they are eager for, almost lusting for prophetic words from God. But they completely overlook the fact that the entire scripture, as Peter points out here, these these this, the very wor- these are the prophetic words that we are instructed to be paying attention to. So we are to pay attention to it as a lamp shining in a dark place. We are to be attentive to the word of God. So no prophecy was ever produced by the will of men, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. But false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. Many will follow their sensuality, and because of them the way of truth will be blasphemed. You'll note that there are a lot of people on social media kind of, you know, a cottage industry of Christianity critics, and they're criticizing Christianity and holding up men like Chuck Pierce and Bill Johnson and others as as, as basically saying, those guys are Christians and Christianity is bad because what a bunch of lousy jerks these people are. And what kind of insanity is this, right? And the thing is, they're not actually critiquing true Christians or biblical Christianity. And it's a result of these false prophets and false teachers that the way of Christ, true Christianity, is being blasphemed. 
In their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Chuck Pierce makes quite a lot of money every year just blathering on and saying completely un, unlucid statements. Their condemnation from long ago is not idle. Their destruction is not asleep. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned but cast them into hell and committed them to chains of gloomy darkness to be kept until the judgment, if he did not spare ancient the ancient world but preserved Noah, a herald of righteousness with seven others, when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, if by turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to ashes, he condemned them to extinction, making an example of what is going to happen to the ungodly. And if he rescued righteous Lot, greatly distressed by the sensual conduct of the wicked, for as that righteous man lived among them day after day, he was tormenting his righteous soul over their lawless deeds that he saw and heard. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment, and especially those who indulge in the lust of defiling passions, and they despise authority. Bold and willful, these people, they do not tremble as they blaspheme the glorious ones, whereas angels, though greater in might and power, do not pronounce a blasphemous judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like irrational animals... Creatures of instinct, born to be caught and destroyed, blaspheming about matters of which they are ignorant. Well, they will also be destroyed in their destruction, suffering wrong as the wage for their wrongdoing. They count it as pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are blots and blemishes, reveling in their deceptions while they feast with you. They have eyes full of adultery, insatiable for sins. They entice unsteady souls, and they have hearts trained in greed. Accursed children, forsaking the right way, that they have gone astray, and they have followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved gain from wrongdoing, but was rebuked for his own transgression. A speechless donkey spoke with a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These false teachers, they are waterless springs. Can you imagine being out in the wilderness and just like your, your canteen's empty, you need something to drink, and you come across a spring and there's no water in it. The false teachers and false prophets like what we're hearing right now, they're waterless springs. And they are mists driven by a storm. From them the gloom of utter darkness has for them the gloom of utter darkness has been reserved. For they speak loud boasts of folly, enticing. Uh, they entice by sensual passions of the flesh those who are barely escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom, but they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whatever overcomes a person, to that is he is enslaved. For if, after they have escaped the defilement of the world through the lo- knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. For it would have been better for them to have ne- to to never have known the way of the righteousness then after knowing it to turn back from the holy commandment delivered to them. So what is what the true proverb says has happened to them. The dog returns to its own vomit. The sow, after washing herself, returns to wallow in the mire. Yeah, so that's what we're hearing here. Exactly what Peter prophesied against. But I promise we'll also talk about spiritual warfare here in a minute. I want to, I want you to consider that as well as part of this video. But let's listen a little bit more to this just complete gobbledy gook. These angels all had their um, their swords in their sheath, and what the Lord said was, after April, uh, these angels would be sent one by one in His time to each state. And they would determine whether they kept the sword in their sheath or where they pulled the sword out and went to war over what was set against him from moving from state to state to state. See, I believe in Alaska, you are moving with him. So I, I really believe that after Passover, you guys are going to start really seeing an incredible activity in the spirit like you've never seen before. Amen. That goes so well with the Amen. He didn't even say anything. Encounter that I had after the after the uh, Holy Ghost and fire encounter. Uh, while I was in the encounter, the Lord said, "Open up your spirit eyes. Turn and look." And when I turned to look, I saw these chariots of fire 
surrounding Alaska. And I said, Lord, what are these? And he said, these are my angels of fire that need to be released over the state and over the nation and nations of the earth for the war at hand and the war that is to come. And so we... Uh, so people who are listening to folks like this, they are literally off in the weeds. They are being distracted from the thing that we are told to do, to be in the word of God and to know it. They, they are chasing after every little sign, wonder, vision, dream, whatever, and, and looking for confirmation of all this stuff when we should be in the word. Released uh, those uh, angels of fire over Alaska. And I believe that before this uh, broadcast is over, it would be important for us to release those uh, angels of fire over the nation. as They're going to release angels of fire over the nation before the end of their broadcast. Wow, that's quite, quite the Zoom call. Well... Well, I think what, what you're going to see and what we can do from uh, Alaska, uh, Eleanor, is really decree that this mobilization of an angelic activity that Mary heard and you saw will begin to be active after Passover. And I'm not sure that how you guys move there in Alaska is... So have any of you detected the increased angelic activity post-Passover 2023? So key for our whole nation starting uh, at the end of April. And so we want to really decree that you accelerate in your movement and the activity of uh, supernatural activity over you accelerate. Yeah, I, I, if you have a prophecy bingo card and you've been filling it out, you probably already have triple bingo. Wow. Beginning in April, at the end of April, and there comes an advancement. I think then you're going, let me prophesy, you guys are going to have an open door to uh, other states to go in and share the model of uh, m mobilization of the supernatural. You're not going to just share the model of what we've taught all these years. You're going to say, this is how God is ready to mobilize the supernatural charge that Lord Sabaoth has sent over your state. It's very much like what Mary heard. And yet you'll be able to say, to do this, you're going to have to certain, set certain things in order. You have to have your spiritual government in order. You have to know where your leadership of the tribes are. You're going to have to- Have you figured out where your leadership of the tribes are yet? know how to communicate quickly. See, I believe you are setting up a prototype that will be modeled in other states. Amen. And she said, amen. He didn't say anything. Oh my. All right, let's kind of wind up with this. Okay, this all kind of comes into the NAR doctrine of spiritual warfare. But when we talk about spiritual warfare, key text is in Ephesians chapter 6. And believe me when I tell you, you probably have been taught this wrong. And, uh, and so in the NAR model, we have to, you know, we need angelic hosts and we need to get the names of the local demons and principalities and authorities so that we, we might even have to interrogate demons in order to figure out what the name of the local regional head, head and principality is so that we can name them and tear them down. And this is complete nonsense. It has nothing to do with actual spiritual warfare. So consider what Ephesians 6 does say. Finally... Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. I'm going to note something here. As a Christian, everybody who is truly a Christian has the Holy Spirit. And we do not wage warfare with our own strength as Christians, because if you did that, you'd burn out really fast. Instead, we are strong in the might of the Lord. So note what it says. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. So put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. You'll note that we battle not against human beings. And in the truest way of thinking of it, there isn't a single human being, no matter how much they hate Christians and hate Jesus, they're not technically our enemies. They are doing the work of our enemy uh, and maybe under his sway, but that person is not in the truest sense our enemy. We battle not against flesh and blood. We battle for flesh and blood. 
by praying and preaching the gospel, right? So who do we fight against? Satan and the principalities, the demonic principalities that we, we, see, we don't even see. They exist. So because of that, it says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to... And here's where we're going to see a, a repetition of a concept in, in very rapid succession here in this text. And it's this concept of standing and withstanding. Listen to what it says. So take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. So note, stand, stand, withstand, stand. As Christians, we're not called to advance. We're called to stand where Christ has placed you, you stand. And you'll note it's a precarious situation because standing, you'll note that we are going to be under constant attack by the devil. They're described as flaming arrows, right? And it's not, it's not a comfortable position to be in at all. But we are called to stand, therefore, having done what? Fastened on the belt of truth. You'll note that no, no lie is of the truth. This is, a, this is strictly stated in Scripture. And God never lies. And when you have people spewing God's words, which are not his words, but they are lies that come from their own heart, or worse, a demonic source, they don't serve the, tr- the church at all. Christians are to be speakers of truth, the truth, and Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said that those who worship him will worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, we just heard from Chuck Pierce and these these poor lost souls from Alaska. None of it was true. It's all a deception. So we have to put on, fasten on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. Breastplates, you'll note, protect your, your organs and your heart and your lungs they, they, from getting a gut shot that will, be fo- that will be fatal, right? And we have the breastplate of the righteousness of God, which is given to us by grace through faith. And as the shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Now, in, in, Ro- in the Roman era, they would actually take their shields. They had a, a leather out, you know, like a leather cover for their shields. And they, but prior to a battle, they would soak their shields in, in water so that when the flaming arrows come flying in, they would hit the shield and the, and the moisture from the arrows would help put the flames out. So you'll, you'll get the idea here. So we've got the breastplate of righteousness. Our feet are ready with the gospel of peace. We, put on, we take up the shield of faith with which we extinguish all the flaming darts, the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then watch this. Praying. Prasukamai, by the way, has nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing, to do with decreeing and declaring. Prasukamai means to petition a deity to pray. To petition a deity means you have to ask. And it gets even more specific here in a second here. Praying at all times. And of course, if we're in a pitched battle and the arrows of the devil are flying in and they're on fire, then you know, then we need to be communicating with God. God, we need help. You think we're going to get through this on our own strength, our own way, wisdom, our own ideas? No way. Praying at all time in the Spirit with all prayer and, and here's another word, supplication. And supplication are petitions, their request. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me that the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. So I think you get the idea here. What these people are promoting is just insanity. And they think that this has something to do with the God of the Bible, when in fact it doesn't. And if anything, Chuck Pierce and these folks from Alaska, they are fulfilling the warnings of Scripture 
by and you know telling us that in the last days there would be many false prophets and false teachers prophecy of peter in particular that we read earlier comes to mind but that's exactly what these people are they are truly false and the people who are listening to them and think this is christianity they don't they legitimately do not know their bible so hopefully you found this helpful. If so, all the information on how you can share the video is down below in the description. And I'd like to make a quick shout out to those people who are part of our crew. I want to say thank you because it is our crew members that make it possible for us to do what we are doing here at Fighting for the Faith in serving you with these videos and comparing and contrasting what people are saying in the name of God to the Word of God. And if you would like to financially support us by joining our crew, the information on how you can join our crew, the link to it is down below below in the description. So until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen. Amen.